So thank you, the chairman, and good morning, ladies and uh, gentlemen. My name is Fuji Niu and work in State Key Laboratory of Frozen Soil Engineering. And uh, I'm very honored to give a presentation on adaptation of transportation infrastructures building on degradating permafrost. And also thanks to Professor Guy Dohe and the Hill C. Brooks in Navarre University. They two are co-authors of the trans transaction paper for this important uh, conference. And the contents about my presentation include background, transportation infrastructures in permafrost regions, and also permafrost degradation and transportation infrastructures. And the third one, engineering development of adaptive capacity, and fourth, full-scale application, relative cost and risk analysis. And then I'd like to conclude my presentation. At first, how about transportation infrastructures in permafrost region? This uh, figure shows that permafrost uh, distribution is the North Hemisphere, and also show the main road that, that include highway and uh, rail road around the Asiatic regions and also on the Tibet Plateau. So transportation infra uh, infrastructures is essential to social and economic subsidence in so-called uh, so -called polar regions. And also, they are very vertical for small population spread out thousands of kilometers. In fact, road construction in permafrost regions has more than 100 years of history. Approximately 9,000 kilometers of railroad were operational in permafrost region before the, before the K2R Qinghe Tibet Railway was constructed. In China, we can see the permafrost distribute uh, uh, about uh, one quarter of the la uh, land territory, and the main part is on the Qinghe Tibet Plateau here. We call it high altitude permafrost. It is about 7% of the Tibet Plateau uh, land area, and another one is in the northeast of China. It's the same to the permafrost in Russia. And also, we can see many roads and uh, highway in permafrost regions. And here is the new, uh, oldest uh, uh, railroad in, uh, in northeast China. How about in Canada? We can see that the permafrost distribution map and many roads around the north edge of the permafrost area. In fact, the population in northern territory, in northern Canada, is around uh, 800,000 Oh, 500,000, 500, uh, it is a population in Macau, China, so that is a very sparse population in the northern part. And uh, in Yukon and the northern uh, west territory, the population is only 80,000. Uh, that is, uh, all the people can be uh, gathered in the national stadium in Beijing. So the population is quite sparse, but however, Infrastructures, transportation inf infrastructures is vertical and also sometimes life supporting inf infrastructures to local people and the social development. So, her, so her about permafrost influencing uh, infrastructure? At first, we know normally permafrost is enriched in ground ice and also sensitive to uh, temperature change. This one is show that on the Qinghe uh, Tibet Plateau. It is massive ground ice and ice in cold uh, draw draining and in uh, Arctic regions. And normally, natural soil and climate warming, and even water or wind eroding can, and uh, forest fire can cause the degradation. And also, engineering disturbing soil and the, uh, 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 human activities uh, can also cause some hazards like the thermal cast lake and the bimodal flows, and the soil fluctuations, and the settlement, and even landslide. So these kinds of uh, ge geological hazards can potentially or directly influence the infrastructures. Again, we can see the trunks in Northeast China is old railway. The trunks is totally seriously, and also the tracks in Bakil, uh, Bikar are more railway, and the Chara to China railway is very serious and also cracks on the Qinghe Tibet Highway, and the cracks and the settlement on the Qinghe Tibet Highway. And also we can see settlement in Alaska Highway, 
So soil settlement can correct damage to transportation infrastructures, nearly to all of the transportation infra infrastructures. Another um, problem is frost heave, like this one. It is uh, the power was uh, frost up uplifted and the surface is tilted. So soil settlement, frost heave, frost heave, and even weathering of the rocks can do damages to transportation infrastructures. Anyway, soil settlement is the most serious one. So how about the situation of the existing infrastructures? According to investigation, about uh, of the trans Siberia Railway, about 30% about of the total lands was damaged. And also, of the uh, Baikal re uh, Railway, the region is over 30%. Of the Qinghai Tibet Highway, also damage uh, region is over 30%. So totally, the damage region was over 30% for existing road before the Qinghai Tibet Railway was constru constructed. So permafrost degradation is still an enormous challenge. So how about permafrost degradation? I'm not care about how much and the whole um, uh, large area of the permafrost degraded, but our president of IPA, Professor Tony said, it is not permanent. What we know is turbine because permafrost soil is like to be irreversible. So that is uh, permafrost change and the infrastructures around the world and how about the permafrost degradation on the transportation infrastructures. At first we can see, we have a look about the global natural changes and the Lawrence and the Slater predicted a decrease of permafrost error by 62% and 90% by 2000, uh, 2010, uh, 2010, uh, 100 and the BY and A2 scenarios. And also recent result of, uh, shows a similar degradation. A Chinese researchers projected changes in high altitude, high latitude and high altitude permafrost regions during the period from 1986 to 2099. And that is mean the degradation will be continued. So one of my colleagues in Andrew Institute studied the special distribution of changing rate of the active cyclists. We can see the active layer cyclists generally increased from the highly continuous permafrost zone to the sourcing discontinuous zone, showing a dramatic in warmer permafrost region than those in cold permafrost region. So how about the degradation caused the risks or damages to local infrastructures? And uh, Professor Nielsen uh, showed the pictures about uh, the risk around the uh, Arctic regions and also Tibet regions. We can see the most serious region is around the, around the I'm sorry, this, this area, and also on the Qinghai Tibet Plateau. So how to solve the problems? Again, we use this map, and uh, Professor Jogson showed this. It's quite complex. Anyway, from the physical condition leading to permafrost degradation, maybe some, somewhat about the geology and the climate, especially microclimate change, and the vegetation is on the surface may be changed. At last, the problems causing to uh, influencing the infrastructures is soil settlement, like uh, removing uh, the peat soil because we know peat soil under uh, soil and frozen state, the thermal conductivity is quite different and also related to water content, and also the surface water gathering. Fortunately, we uh, monitored a thermal cast lake near, uh, near, a highway, near the highway of Qinghai Tibet Railway Highway. In, two, three, uh, in three years, about 23 meters of the, uh, of the uh, thermal cast, uh, frozen soil, was dis disappearing around in three years from 2006 to 2009. Here, this, this picture shows. That means the water gathering on the surface can to influencing uh, to the local factors by degradating of the permafrost. So, because of the so degradation, the physical conditions 
of the uh, embankment also, also will be changed. Because of the sawing at the toe of the slopes, the salt saw will be consolidated. And also, because of the slopes on two sides, heat will be absorbed from the slope surface and the uh, embankment surface. Even um, because of the snow cover, the warm, warming uh, will lead to the degradating also of the uh, permafrost here. So sometimes cracks and caused by settlement will occur. And even sometimes maybe landslide or uh, seriously settlement. In, in fact, uh, some site monitoring results really prove this. Like this one, it's a site along the Qinghe Tibet Highway. We can see from uh, 1996 to 2007, all the active layers, thickness of active layer is increasing. And also, Com uh, also, the deformation is continued. Show by this one, this the deformation. And the deformation is well related to sawing rate. So that means, with continuous degradation of a permafrost, the de deformation of the embankment or rod bed will be continued. Sometimes, maybe unfrozen uh, a layer or unfrozen core will be uh, formed under the embankment. So this one is also about the Qinghe Tibet Highway. From 2001, there is a, a, a four meters thickness thick of the unfrozen layer uh, formed. And also, the deformation of the embankment continued. So we can see the degradation or sowing of permafrost can cause engineering problems, also damage to infrastructures. So how to solve or prevent the pro problems we can see some engineering development of adaptive capacity. At first, we have a traditional passive method. In fact, we have studied this kind of method for a couple of years. And uh, during the past, like this one, the old lady is selling the, uh, ice lily. He's uh, covered with ice, uh, ice lily with a uh, quilt. But unfortunately, this kind of method cannot solve the melting problems forever, even for a long time. So we tend to maybe in increase the thermal resistance, so increase the embankment from the engineering site. But if the embankment heat was increased, the slope area will be increased. So heat absorbed from the sunshine will increase. And then maybe the embankment will be lowered. At last, there should be a reasonable uh, heat in different regions. Anyway, the passive method, with, even with use, using geotextile, can only delay the permafrost sowing, but cannot ensure thermal and dynamic stability of the permafrost for a time. So what we can, can we do? Can we do, uh, use artificial ground freezing method? The answer is no, because it's too energy costly for So how to cool down the subgrade and online permafrost? As the artificial ground freezing is not, can, cannot be used, where to get the core energy, we tend to the cold earth spot around the world to see what kind of factors influencing the existence of permafrost. Like this way, we can control, we can control uh, radiation to control uh, thermal conductivity to control heat evictions. Because there is a complex integration between environment and permafrost and climate and engineering, the only way we is to use the engineering method and to change the local factors to influence thermal stability and deformation, to control the deformation. So again, we use this uh, system. From the geology, climate, especially microclimate and surface, at first we can change the soil or the rock, or some kind of the other materials. And also we can use heat convections like the thermal siphon and, uh, and also uh, ducts and those like things like uh, holy bricks. And we can change the color of the surface. We can do some sunshine shade and uh, uh, grass cover. So why we control solar, uh, solar radiation. 
At first, we can see uh, some indicators from a permafrost status. This table shows that is uh, the ground temperature at the low slope near the west station in Xinjiang province. It is north, uh, west China. The ground temperature is minus 2.4, and the permafrost thickness is around 100 meters. But on the west and the south slopes, the ground temperature is quite high. So that means to control the solar radiation can greatly influence the permafrost status. In engineering aspect, high albedo surface materials tested along the Chinhiti Belt Highway, but not now it is disappearing. And also, a uh, bit new surface treatment using light color aggregates in the Beaver uh, Creek project. It is supported by Gidori. And also, high albedo materials tested in Salut, Quebec, is about uh, every, uh, every. And sometimes, Maybe the ballast can be painted in, into, uh, into, into a white to protect the radiation, prevent the radiation. This one is a test section along the Qinghe Tibet Railway. It is constructed in 2003. Unfortunately, the material cannot resist strong wind and high radiation. At last, it is removed. Anyway, uh, in why, uh, about one year's monitoring can show that the surface temperature on the shade is about four degrees lower than the normal status, and also this kind of structures. Similarly, the uh, surface temperature, ground temperature was lowered. And we can see the ground temperature field like this one. This in winter time, normal one here is an unfrozen area. On the sheet, there's snow. And uh, just after wire, just after wire here, this, the depth of the active layer is around eight meters. Just after wire, it is uplifted uh, to two meters. So the effect is very obvious. The second way is to control the heat convections. At first, we still tend to use a natural situation. Here is, uh, is uh, ancient tombs in Kazakhstan. It is about 2,000 to 2,500 years ago. Because of the statue, uh, structures like this, permafrost was found. So there are many sites covered by block on the screen or core room or talus slopes. We can find uh, uh, ground temperatures different to the nearby uh, nearby area, at least twenty, at least twenty uh, reported cases around the world. The ground temperature is uh, greatly lower than the, uh, around the areas. I monitor the, this one here. Oh, I'm sorry. I monitor this way here in China. It is. 200 kilometers far from Beijing and uh, three, uh, 600 kilometers far from the south edge of the permafrost. The uh, air temperature here is about uh, uh, 7.3 degrees C, but we can see here. So this area, in some regions, there's no, no trees. And uh, investigated with GPR and monitoring work, we can see there is permafrost around the, uh, these areas. It is on, under the crust rocks, and the ground temperature is like this. And in winter, uh, from these two boreholes, we can see uh, uh, minimal ground temperature is around uh, minus five, and uh, around a year is minus one. In uh, summertime, it's no, no trees, and in uh, winter time, it's just holes on the floor. That means air are convecting uh, inside. From this, we can use the two infrastructure uh, construction. And this one is tested by Professor Chen Gudong in around the 1970s, and the result is quite good. And we used three kinds, uh, three kinds of different structures, crust rock, basement, and backment and uh, crust rock sloped embankment, and U-shaped uh, crust rock embankment. And uh, this one also called air convection embankment, ACE embankment uh, in Creek. 
uh, Beaver Creek experiment site. So how about the monetary result? At first, we can see this one is uh, the upper one is the uh, traditional embankment. We can see after the construction, the ground temperature is increased. And on the uh, uh, crust rock basement and the sloped and the U-shaped, all the ground temperature is lowered. Unfortunately, this one, uh, the seismic uh, character is not good because that can cause the cracks. And also the same result was gotten at the uh, Beaver Creek site. And the ground temperature monitored over 10 years shows that after the uh, first three or four years, the uh, ground temperature at different depths is decreased. How about the structures to, uh, to resist the climate warming? From numerical simulation, we can see if the, ground, uh, if the air temperature increased 2.6 in 50 years, such, such structures can still per, protect the underlying permafrost. But the traditional one, this one, cannot protect the underlying permafrost. <laughs> Third one is, uh, an, another way is to use duct to ventilate the, uh, the duct ventilation methods. We use different styles, and these styles are in uh, Beaver Creek. Because on the Qinghe Tibet Plateau, the air temperature, when the air temperature is high in summer, the wind speed is quite low. But in winter time, the wind is very strong. Maximum uh, speed will reach 30 meters per second. But the temperature is very low. So we use these properties to cool down the embankment. And the result from the Beaver Creek, also you can, we can see the uh, sowing depths it was lowered and also just uh, after a wire, the traditional wire, the permafrost temperature under the traditional embankment is quite high, and on the duct ventilation embankment is quite lower. This one is also uh, uh, Professor Gidori called, uh, called the heat gene structures at Beaver Creeks. Similarly, the mechanism is the same to let air convected uh, flow into the embankment to cool down the soils. The third one is to control thermal conductivity. As I said, the pit soils, the conductivity is different on different temperatures and covert co content. But also, maybe we can use the offset at the surface. This one is shown uh, along the Qinghe Tibet Highway, a uh, railway. Here is covered by grass. The ground temperature is quite lower, and these form materials is somewhat warmer. Without, uh, nothing, uh, without anything covered, the ground temperature is quite high. So it is a kind of a passive wine, can resist a kind of the warming, but for, at last, it, it will fall. And also, thermal insulation layer was used. We can see it just cut down the, 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 the rising the range of the temperature changes. Another way is to use thermal siphon. Anyway, this one is very expensive, but it is effective. We installed a lot of thermal siphons along the Qinghe Tibet Highway Railway because you know the ground temperature on the Tibet Plateau is quite, warm, quite higher than in Arctic regions. When the thermal siphon installed, the ground temperature was de uh, greatly uh, decreased from boho monitoring at different depths. If the condition is very com com complex or very difficult to solve, then dry bridge can be applied. The longest dry bridge uh, of the Qinghui Tibet Rio is 11.7 11, 11 kilometers long. It is in warm and ice-rich permafrost. And the second one, we can use the com combined method to cover the surface with crust rock and thermal insulation, but also can be uh, installed with you know, thermal siphon. Anyway, both of the, all of the duct ventilation, crust rock basement embankment, and the U crust rock embankment thermal siphon, along with uh, insulation, can be used under such conditions. The mean annual, ground temp uh, annual air temperature is minus 3.5, and even 2. degrees C increased in 50 years. This method can still be effective. 
So how about the full scale application? The main infrastructures in permafrost region, like stress Pika Railroad, it is nearly 120 years old, and Alaska Railway is nearly 100, and the newest one is Tinghati by the railway. Uh, so, uh, of all these roads, the high speed, highest rail speed in the permafrost region is Tinghati by the railway. It's reached 100 kilometers per hour and reached the design object. Along the Tinghati by the railway, 142 kilometers of air convection embankment throughout the embankment, and also 156 kilometers placed around the side slopes, and 30 kilometers installed with thermal siphon. That means totally the permafrost region distance is 50, uh, 550 meters, uh, kilometers long. Most uh, embankment was uh, constructed with active cooling method. And also, it is tested in uh, two large scale adaptation in uh, Nowak and also in uh, Salute uh, Airport testing sections. And uh, some test risk investigation and uh, evaluation along the Qinghiti by the highway was done. Like the settlement, uh, Cirrus is different, and there's trans transversal cracks, and longitudinal cracks, and that cracks. So we need some cautions. Risk analysis about climate warming. At first, the Qinghati Bad Railway was designed without considering about climate warming. About one year or two years later, Y degree C in 100 years were considered. And then, about $0.5 trillion was added. Another way is environment change and weathering, wind, blowing sand, and uh, a slow covering can influence the cooling effect, like this one. Bro uh, uh, rocks are weathering, and the porosity will be decreased, and the convection uh, uh, efficiency will be decreased. And then we move the two. Primarily, it covers the uh, crust rock surface with geotextile and uh, soils to, to prevent the uh, blowing sand. And in the future, maybe high, super highway will be constructed, and we design different uh, structures like this one. Here's uh, crust rock, and uh, in, in, in the middle side is also crust rock, and we can uh, install some tubes to let the air to be air to be flowing into the embankment. Cost analysis is quite difficult to to see that. Which one is, uh, is uh, most expensive? Anyway, ACE, that is air convection embankment, is, can save a lot of the money. So at last, I'll give some conclusions and suggestions. At first, the climate warming and the change of the local factors influencing the development of permafrost have been leading to degradation of permafrost and resulted in instability and even damages of the infrastructures. Expense, expensive maintenance and reinforcement urge the traditional engineering method of increasing the thermal resistance to change into actively cooling method. Learning from the lateral is very important. The method based on the cooling principle include using high albedo surface materials, sun shirts, air convection embankment, air ducts, heat drain, thermal siphon, and geosynthetic reinforcement showed a positive effect of cooling the underlying permafrost especially along the Qinghati Bad Railway in permafrost regions. A cost and effectiveness analysis was completed for the Beaver Creek test. Still, little information is available. With regards to the relative cost of each adaptive strategy, lowering the maintenance cost during the primary design is encouraged. It is suggested to truly consider the influence of the continuous climate warming on permafrost degradation and the lifetime surveys in designing and the construction of new transportation infrastructures in permafrost region. And last, maybe uh, suggestions to, uh, for IPA to set up an international workshop for investigation on guidebook is necessary. And thanks for your attention.